Oh, joining us right now to talk more about this is uh, Salt Financial President Alfred Eskandar. Great to see you, Alfred. Thanks very much Good for joining us. Now, GE has completely turned around, and it is now up 2%. On this miss, your reaction to what we're hearing from General Electric? Well, I, I just think that's the market, um, as you said earlier, already priced in um, an earnings miss, and the expectations have been pretty low. If you look at the stock all year, uh, it's down about 36 percent. So what's exciting about it is the new leadership and hopefully the new vision for GE going forward. Yeah, I mean the market value has been cut in more than half. Yeah, and yeah. and it, it's been just a slow, steady sell-off for GE. But I guess my question on it is what? Where's the growth when, when the dust settles and, and the stock does turn? They're selling off a lot of different pieces of the company. What, what's the area you look at for a cult to really see growth and start creating some shareholder and, value? And cult yeah. says power. Yeah. Uh, to, your, to your point, it has been a very slow, steady um, loss all year. So if you look at uh, markets been... Um, uh, relatively calm except for February and now in, in October with volatility really spiking. Um, GE has been basically a very staid, you know, downward trajectory uh, stock um, since January. So I don't think there's a whole lot of excitement with the exception of the new CEO and hopefully his new vision for it. Maria I've mentioned the power division. GE is going to reorganize the power division to accelerate businesses operating and financial improvements. It's going to create two units in the power division. It's organizing it to improve the cost structure, enhance execution agility, and drive better outcomes for customers and investors. We'll see. That's a lot of like corporate gobbledygook, isn't it? <laughs> the, uh, the, but there, that's one area of focus, trying to improve that business. Also, shrinking and deleveraging of GE Capital that continues trying to improve its leverage. So profile. more asset sales are coming then. I mean, continued deleveraging of uh, of GE Cap Capital. And we talk. I a thought lot. that was almost. All gone. Uh, it's Capital. I did. I mean. Not not quite yet. Okay. And we talk about GE all the time as a bellwether, but mm. the market cap slipped below a hundred billion dollars. So what was once a, a mighty three hundred fifty billion market. was the right. I yep. mean, you're talking it was close to four hundred billion. Yes, and now it's down under a hundred billion. So um, it'll be interesting to see if they can turn it around. They needed someone new at the helm. They have someone new at the helm, and um, it'll be interesting. Well, it, you know, the whole sector is also challenged, right? When you think, Dagan was talking earlier about tariffs, and you cannot not inject the tariff discussion when you're talking about large industrials and certainly uh, companies in the power sector. So um, that is something that is still going to be a headwind uh, getting into uh, 2019. The dividend cut, how significant is that for them? Well, I, I think we need, you know, they need to preserve capital. Uh, I think there was even chat about a, uh, a potential equity raise. I'm not sure if that got mentioned. I did not get a chance to read the earnings. This is but, the second dividend yeah. cut this year. Okay. No, like I said, it, it's new leadership. I mean, I think the big story, in our opinion, uh, the way we look at stocks is it, overall sensitivity to the market, uh, correlation to the market, and I think GE's got itself um, a new person at the helm, and it needs new leadership and it needs a new vision. Yeah, and if you're General Electric and you come out with this quarter, big miss, yep. and wiping out the dividend, and if the stock kind of holds steady on this, I'd have to think the new leadership would consider that a, a major win for them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think the fact that it's reversed, you know, uh, and it's up a, a little bit this morning is telling you something. I mean, there there is optimism um, seeping in t back into the stock, and that's a good thing. Well, maybe. It was up 2%. Now it's just up a fraction. Let's just put this in context. This this company had a dividend of $0.48 cents yeah. a share after spinning off the health care business. Then it cut the dividend. It, it, it was a quarterly payout to $0.12 cents a share, down from $0.24. Cents, and now we're down to $0.01 cent on this dividend. Yeah. And, and um, you know, what I think about, Maria, with it? No, go, I just want to point out, because we were talking about the power unit, it recorded a non-cash goodwill impairment charge of $22 billion before taxes related to GE Power. Again, struggling to sell mm. the uh, the turbines that it manufactures to power plants as, as the power industry is increasingly shifting to, say, wind turbines and solar. And as we see technology taking such a major uh, input in, in our in all of our companies, technology changing how we do business, there's no rules. I think it's important for people at home to realize no rules that GE has to become a bellwether stock again. Um, they, they may, but they also may not. We don't necessarily need General mm. Electric in order for the U.S. economy to yes. move forward. No, it, at one Things point, change. it was the, the longest uh, Dow component. Uh, it was the, the only Dow component that was still left within the Dow Jones Industrial Average 30 companies in, in the original. 
and that was kicked out. It's kicked yeah. out of that. So that tells you something as well. It's, it's a sign of the times. I mean, you, you have um, new dynamics. Replaced by Walgreens, out. by the way. Yeah, and, and I think it is telling of, you know, when, when you look at companies and the new economy uh, growing so large and having market caps, you know, in the hundreds of billions and, and seeing Amazon for the first time, and I'm sorry, Apple hit a trillion dollar mark. I mean, it's, it's telling you um, that vision is really important, and I think with Culp, uh, GE, you know, has a shot. So there's different leadership in this market. What do you want to do? Would you put new money to, to work in this market here, even with this volatility that we're seeing every day? So we saw uh, an inc a little optimism yesterday. I mean, the, the, the S&P was up and down uh, 400 basis points. That's a tremendous move. But the fact that it was able, and the Dow was able to recover so much of the losses in the last, you know, half hour, uh, showed that there were buyers coming in, perhaps buying the dip. Um, again, all the factors in the economy continue to be very strong and positive. So what you've had in October is, is a little bit of, of an anomaly. We've had uh, 16 down days in October. So if you look at the number of down days to up days, that's tremendous. That's a lot of um, volatility. It's, that's a lot of downward pressure. And you put a lot of different markets in, in you know, correction area. I mean, the, the S&P is just shy of being in, in, uh, in the corrections. It, so GE is making major changes to its yep. power division. That's worth noting because the problems, the, the problems within power, one of the reasons that the former CEO was ousted, John Flannery, because the board essentially didn't really, they say that they weren't, weren't blindsided by what was going on in power. That dividend cut from 12 cents a share to one cent a share is going to save GE $3.9 billion of cash every year mm. compared to the prior payout level. Yeah. So. Mm. We do have a jobs report out on Friday. Uh, is that priced in? We're going to expect good numbers for the yeah. month of October in terms of job creation. What's priced into the market right now? What would you expect from the jobs number on Friday? Well, I, I think we're going to get a good jobs number. I, I think what's already priced in is the, you know, the interest rate hike that we saw. I think we're, you know, 70, 75 percent. We're expecting another one in December. Um, big question is going to be around the election. You know, what ultimately happens? It's only a week away. Um, you know, tariffs did weigh in on us yesterday, and that was part of the reason why we saw a, a big pullback. Um, the fourth quarter is going to really be, <clears throat> excuse me, some, some fireworks. Um, but I do see a lot of positive things still playing out, still continuing to be consistent. And I don't think that the, you know, investors should take their eye off the ball in terms of their strategy. I think this is an opportunity to really rebalance and get yourself set up. Um, we saw a lot of profit taking in, in the FANG stocks, which was very crowded. Um, fantastic. Take that cash, use it wisely as you po position your portfolios for 2019 and beyond. So just put it in a different place. Put it in a different yeah. place. I don't think Let's you want to lose your exposure. Absolutely. All right. We, we will leave it there. Alfred, it's good to see you this morning. Thank you. Thanks so much.